Dear friends in Christ, on this most holy night, in which our Lord Jesus passed over from death to life, the Church invites her members, dispersed throughout the world, to gather in vigil and prayer. For this is the Passover of the Lord, in which, by hearing his word and celebrating his sacraments, we share in his victory over death. O Lord, through your Son you have bestowed upon your people the brightness of your light. Sanctify this new fire, and grant that in this Paschal feast we may so burn with heavenly desires that with pure minds we may attain to the festival of everlasting light. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. light of Christ. Thanks be to God. The light of Christ. Thanks be to God.
And let us pray that our God will bring each one of us into the fullness of redemption. The first lesson is from Exodus. As Pharaoh drew near, the Israelites looked back, and there were the Egyptians advancing on them. In great fear, the Israelites cried out to the Lord. They said to Moses, Was it because there were no graves in Egypt that you have taken us away to die in the wilderness? What have you done to us, bringing us out of Egypt? Is this not the very thing we told you in Egypt? Let us alone, and let us serve the Egyptians. For it would have been better for us to serve the Egyptians than to die in the wilderness. But Moses said to the people, Do not be afraid. Stand firm, and see the deliverance that the Lord will accomplish for you today. For the Egyptians, whom you see today, you shall never see again. The Lord will fight for you, and you have only to keep still. Then the Lord said to Moses, Why do you cry out to me? Tell the Israelites to go forward. But you lift up your staff, and stretch out your hand over the sea, and divide it that the Israelites may go into the sea on dry ground. Then I will harden the hearts of the Egyptians, so that they will go in after them. And so I will gain glory for myself over Pharaoh and all his army, his chariots, and his chariot drivers. And the Egyptians shall know that I am the Lord. When I have gained glory for myself over Pharaoh, his chariots, and his chariot's drivers. The angel of God was going before the Israelite army, moved and went behind them. And the pillar of cloud moved from in front of them and took its place behind them. It came between the army of Egypt and the army of Israel. And so the cloud was there with the darkness, and it lit up the night. One did not come near the other all night. Then Moses stretched out his hand over the sea. The Lord drove the sea back in a strong east wind all night, and turned the sea into dry land, and the waters were divided. The Israelites went into the sea on dry ground, the waters forming a wall for them on their right and on their left. The Egyptians pursued and went into the sea after them, all of Pharaoh's horses, chariots, and chariot drivers. At the morning watch, the Lord in the pillar of fire and cloud looked down upon the Egyptian army and threw the army, Egyptian army into panic. He clogged their chariot wheels so that they turned with difficulty. The Egyptians said, Let us free from, flee from the Israelites, for the Lord is fighting for them against Egypt. Then the Lord said to Moses, Stretch out your hand over the sea, so that the water may come back upon the Egyptians upon their chariots and chariot drivers. So Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and at dawn the sea returned to its normal depth. As the Egyptians fled before it, the Lord tossed the Egyptians into the sea. The waters returned and covered the chariots and the chariot drivers. The entire army of Pharaoh that had followed them into the sea not one of them remained. But the Israelites walked on dry ground through the sea, the waters forming a wall for them on their right and on their left. Thus the Lord saved Israel that 
that day from the Egyptians. And Israel saw that Egyptians dead on the seashore. Israel saw the great work that the Lord did against the Egyptians. So the people feared the Lord and believed in the Lord and in his servant Moses. Then Moses and the Israelites sang this song to the Lord. I will sing to the Lord, for he has triumphed gloriously. Horse and rider he has thrown into the sea. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.
everyone who thirsts comes to the waters. And you that have no money, come, buy and eat. Come, buy wine and wine, without money and without price. Why do you spend your money for that which is not bread, and your labor for that which is not satisfying? Listen carefully, carefully to me, and eat what is good, and delight yourselves in rich food. Incline your ear and come to me. Listen, so that you may live. I will make with you an everlasting covenant, my steadfast, sure love for David. See, I made him a witness to the peoples, a leader and commander for the peoples. See, you shall call nations that you do not know, and nations that do not know you shall run to you. Because of the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, for he has glorified you. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake their way, and the unrighteous their thoughts. Let them return to the Lord, that he may have mercy on them, and to our God, for he will abundantly help him. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your ways my ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so my ways are higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. For as the rain and the snow come down from heaven, and do not return there until they have watered the earth, making it bring forth and sprout, giving seed to the sower and bread to the eater, so shall my word be that goes out from my mouth, it shall not return to me empty, but it shall accomplish that which I purpose, and succeed in the thing for which I have sent it. The word of the Lord. Thanks. 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 Thanks.
Easter feast began. Alleluia, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia.
the glory we have by past baptism into death, so that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, so we too might walk in newness of life. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we will certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. We know that our old self was crucified with him so that the body of sin might be destroyed, and we might no longer be enslaved to sin. For whoever has died is freed from sin. But if we have died with Christ, we believe that we have also lived with him. We know that Christ, being raised from the dead, will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. The death he died, he died to sin, once for all. But the life he lives, he lives to God. So you must also consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God in Christ Jesus, the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. For 
for he has been raised, as he said, Come, see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples, He has been raised from the dead, and indeed he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him. This is my message for you. So they left the tomb quickly with fear and great joy and ran to tell his disciples. Suddenly, Jesus met them and said, Greetings! And they came to him, took hold of his feet, and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee. There they will see me. The Gospel of the Lord. Glory to you, Lord Christ. speaking with you 
rather than hunker down at home watching the personalities on TV. So much has been said about the resurrection and what it means for us over the centuries, and it's all so beautiful and so true. God is in the process of making a new creation, one that defies destruction and death. And we are, through the merits of Christ Jesus, invited to be a part of it. But I want to spend a moment on who the witnesses to the resurrection are. In an ordinary year, at least in our part of the world, it's usually, it's all too easy to overlook this very significant Part of the story. Easter is usually a big and very public celebration, presided over by the church's biggest and most notable personalities. It even gets a fair amount of coverage in the secular world. In fact, many of the individuals I named at the beginning of this sermon might well usually play some part in our Easter celebration. We might without even noticing we're doing it, easily assume that the witnesses to the resurrection are the voices that get a lot of public respect and airtime. But this is not how the original resurrection played out at all. While they differ in detail, all four Gospels agree that it was one or more of Jesus' female followers who was the first one to see the empty tomb and the risen Christ. The next witnesses were his disciples, and all but Luke's gospel at least suggest that most appearances occurred in Galilee, far from the regional center of culture and power. The challenging thing about this is that these aren't the people to whom others were inclined to listen in their time. These were, in fact, the ones whom most others would have been predisposed to dismiss and ignore. But these were the witnesses, and without them there would be no sacred story, no church, no resurrection hope, passed down through the generations. This seems to be a common feature of the way God works in history. The witnesses aren't the ones we would expect to bring us the most important news. In fact, they're the ones to whom we might not even be giving a hearing at all if they were trying to tell us something. Apparently, if we want to hear and receive the good news of salvation, it's not going to come to us the easy way through the mouth of someone who already occupies a big role. We're going to have to search for it. And along the way, trust some voices where that doesn't come so naturally. Perhaps more than any other Easter in our memories, this year's provides us an opportunity to do just that. The big voices are talking very, very loud right now. And they're telling us things <clears throat> that if we just go with the flow, seem like all the things that are worthy of our attention to the exclusion of all else. They're giving us updates about the progression of a dreaded virus and the worldwide quarantine that's been imposed to try to control it. They're keeping us up to speed on an upcoming presidential election that will probably have global consequences. They're telling us about war and peace, poverty and prosperity. Surely these are the people we need to be listening to.
the resurrection is happening off in some dark corner. I'm convinced that's exactly what's going on. Something beautiful, something powerful is brewing right now. Something that could upend everything that's been dealing destruction and death to our world for generations. But as much as this something is greater than any of the other news that competes for our attention, it isn't obvious. I can't even say what exactly it is or where it is to be found, but I have the unmistakable sense that it's there. What I do know, however, is what I hear in tonight's resurrection story. If we pay attention to the big voices, the usual suspects, we're going to miss it. They aren't talking about the incredible work that God is doing, and chances are they're never going to. But there are people who are talking about it, and our Easter task is to be awake and open enough to find them. Who is today's Mary Magdalene? Who is today's Peter? Who is today's John? Who are the seemingly insignificant and unprovincial voices who, in spite of their lowly stature, are telling us something infinitely more worthy of our attention than the standard news of the day. Can we work together to find them? Because I am convinced that God's resurrection power is at work in our world right in this very moment. And I, for one, want to discover where and how. Alleluia, he is risen. Happy Easter. Physician and healer, 
to you those who care for the sick and the suffering. Pour out a special blessing upon all who follow your call to care for others in body, mind, or spirit. Give them the gift of courage and protect them from all adversity and harm. Listen, Lord, hear our, hear our prayer. prayer. Lord Jesus Christ, this congregation gathers together as a people made clean and whole by your grace and desiring to know ever more deeply the power of your resurrection. Bless all its members with the gifts of hope, wisdom, and compassion. Pour out a special blessing upon these members in our weekly cycle of prayer. We pray for Day R and Mary M, Tom and Barbara R, Charity R, Mike and Sally R. Put out a special blessing upon these members, as well as those military members in military service. We pray for Aaron B, Abigail M, Valerie M, Amber R, Christopher W, Taylor W, and Joey E. Risen Lord, hear yeah. our prayer. We pray also for all who suffer in body, mind, or spirit, especially those who have requested our prayers for healing and wholeness. We pray for Abe, Alice, Olivia, Anna, Anna Marie, Ashley, Audrey, Becky, Betty, Diana, Donna, Dorothy, Esteban, Glennis, Janice, Jason, Jerry, John, Justin, Kay, Marge, Marie, Marilyn, Mary Beth, Maureen, Naomi, Robert, Sally, Sharon, Steve, Richard, the Graham family, the Weston family. Give to your people the gifts of comfort and healing, as well as a lively and abiding faith in your goodness throughout all circumstances. Risen Lord, hear our prayer. Lord Christ, in your passion and your resurrection, you made death the gateway to new and eternal life. Pour that life upon all your servants departed in this life, including Stephen Weston, Betty Jo Wood, Mike Weston, Ronald, Robert Ronald Butcher, and Janice Lucy. And raise them to everlasting glory in your kingdom. Risen Lord, hear our prayer. And now, O Christ, in eager anticipation of your coming kingdom, we pray to you with hearts and voices for our other needs and concerns. We offer you thanks for all the blessings of this life.
friends, we will now celebrate the first Holy Communion of Easter, as we did last week at Palm Sunday. Uh, due to our, our social distancing requirements, I will be the only one to receive the physical elements of Eucharist. Please be aware that while this will ordinarily not be our practice, I will do so on behalf of the entire congregation, and that it is a time-honored teaching of our church that the desire to commune is the same thing as to actually do it. So please, in spirit and in your heart, do receive the body and blood of our Lord, the free gift of life given to you and to all. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and sacrifice to God.
become one body and one spirit, a living sacrifice in Christ to the praise of your name. Remember, Lord, your one holy Catholic and apostolic church, redeemed by the blood of your Christ. Reveal its unity, guard its faith, and preserve it in peace. Remember all those who work for the health of others. Remember all those who have died from illness, from environmental disaster, from war, all who have died in the peace of Christ, and those whose faith is known to you alone, and bring them into the place of eternal joy and light, and grant that we may find our inheritance with the ever-blessed Virgin Mary, with patriarchs, prophets, apostles, and martyrs, with Mary Magdalene, and all the witnesses to your Son's resurrection, and all the saints who have found favor with you in ages past. We praise you in union with them and give you glory through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the peace. Alleluia. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Although you cannot receive them in physical form, feed on Christ, the risen Christ, in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Thanksgiving, let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as the members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food and the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Thank 
mercy of the 